Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry. Today we're going to be working on a kitting up of the You Must Believe canvas by Mandy Mazzano. This is a Diamond Art Club painting and it is a 43 by 32 centimeter, which is one of the smaller ones that I have done. I am going to be using my cutlery tray method of kitting up today and I'll be using two different sizes of drill containers. The smaller size and the larger size. The smaller size is from close to my heart. The larger size I picked up from Joann's. And I'm gonna be using the cutlery tray versus this nifty little zip container. I love the zip container containers themselves and I love the organization of it but I was having trouble putting the drills back into the container on my last painting. I kept missing the opening and drills would go everywhere and just spill. And I was getting a little bit frustrated having to put them all back in, even with the spout on my nice big drill tray. The other is I enjoy having this tray for my tools. It helps keep the cat out of my tools. And then the other issue that I have with this nifty little zip container is my cat likes to sleep in the lid. He thinks if it's open, if it fits, it sits. He doesn't do it quite so much with the cutlery tray, although while I'm kidding up, he is quite interested. He's gonna try and sit down in it gonna find that it's not very comfortable but he's going to try and for those that don't know this is dumpling he's a little bit bigger than he used to be almost on my past videos so I'm gonna start off a little awkwardly with this I really wish they would kind of put everything in order uh, the way that it is on the legend so it'll make it a little bit easier to put together i am using the diamond art club sticker that comes with the canvases but i also made a copy of the legend and the sticker just in case i need to make another sticker sheet sometimes i get dissatisfied with the containers as i'm working and i switch up the containers so i did made myself an extra copy just in case but i'm really really enjoying the clearness of the symbols from this dac sticker and I'm going to go ahead and pour my drills into their containers inside my drill boat to kind of keep the mess contained. Now you'll notice that in my cutlery tray, it has one, two, it has five. I had to stop and count because I've got two trays. I've got a smaller tray and a larger tray. This is the larger tray. It has five rows to put my drills, and I typically will organize my drills, numbers, letters, then symbols. And then within each row, I keep them in numerical order, alphabetical order, or all the arrows together, all the lines together, all the little people together, that kind of thing with the symbols. And it, my brain will train and remember where I put each of the containers when I put them back to where I can almost reach for what I need without thinking by the second or third square after I've started a painting. And see, there's the reason why I use my little drill boat. Get my little paintbrush out, make sure everything goes back in neatly and it works out well and if you're wondering that pink pot that i keep putting my fingers into that is sort quick it is a fingertip moistener i worked in healthcare for many many years and you learn very very quickly in a hospital setting don't lick your fingers so i kind of became addicted to sort quick and having my fingertips prepped so to say to work on things you know play with paper and play with stuff like that so i use sort quick instead of licking my fingers so that's why you see me dipping into that pink pot So we're just going to be matching up stickers to bags of drills and putting them in their appropriate containers here for a while. So I think what I'll do is we'll just have a little bit of life update. If that's a whisker, the, the boys have been losing their whiskers quite a bit. So I've been digging whiskers out of everything, including my paintings. It's been a little bit irritating, but they can't help it. So a little bit of a life update. We're in the middle of an Arctic vortex here in Texas. Um, today is about 24 degrees and it's been this way for 
almost a week it came in on Tuesday today is Friday and I am cold I there's a reason I don't live up north I don't know how you guys do it and for my friends that are up north quit laughing at me but I am sitting here with wool socks on a pair of sweatpants a long shirt a blanket and I had my heater on before I started this little voiceover and I'm still cold I'm, I'm not liking this I'm I'm a natural southerner that likes our sun and likes our heat and this winter weather is supposed to last for about another week and then hopefully we get our Texas weather back bye bye baby bye bye kitten you know we don't want to look at your rear end bye bye he's getting up under my desk to sleep he has a box under there he likes to sleep in so we're all kind of snuggled in thankfully my husband does not have to go anywhere to go to work that is a big advantage to recent times is he's been able to work at home and I'm rather enjoying that other than the fact that his car is in front of the freezer in the garage all the time now so if I need something out of the freezer it's pull your car out let me get in the freezer put your car back in we play that game about once a week but it's all doable I'd rather do that and have him home So what other books have you guys been reading or listening to while you are working on your canvases? I have started the Outlander series again. I have tried to read this series of books for over 20 years. I have all of the books in Audible. I, When I first started reading the books, it was in book form and I just couldn't do it. I just could not get into it and I gave all the books to a friend of mine. She thought I was out of my mind that I couldn't get into them. I've started listening to them again. I'm on Outlander. Um, I don't know what chapter I'm on at the moment, but I'm, I am listening to her. Jamie and Claire have just gotten married. And I decided to go ahead and watch episode one of the series just to kind of match the names and faces. And I, I can't watch the series. This is going to be one of those those book to series type things that I'm gonna, just going to have to listen listen to the book and not watch it. For some reason, I can't get into watching the series, but I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the book at the moment. So this might be the right time for me to start this series. I just finished Discovery of Witches, both the series and the books. I read the books first. Anytime there's a book to, book to TV or book to movie, I always try to read the book first. And the new Dallas book has come out for J.D. Robb, the Eve Dallas series. I believe it's number 52. 52 or 53 in the series faithless in death I think is what it's called and I started that one but I think I'm gonna stop I know my friends are gonna just fall out of their chairs because I normally will marathon listen to those but I think I'm gonna stop finish the first Outlander book and then have that kind of be a bridge in between first and second Outlander books read the Dallas book and then go back and do book two on the on the series Seems to be making a little bit of a mess with my drills over here. Got to get all that cleaned up. And you're going to notice before much longer, I abandoned those cute little pink scissors for a pair of regular scissors. Those are actually embroidery scissors that I use when I'm fussy cutting in scrapbooking. And they've been working out really well when you have an abundance of drills and you like have more than one baggie that you have to refill your containers. They work out really well for opening the, the baggies when you're refilling your containers, but for kitting up, they are a bit of a pain in the butt. So I went ahead and transferred over to a big pair of scissors and it's working faster and easier. You're wondering what I'm doing leaning down. I have a huge bucket of my containers below me. I pulled out nine of the large ones because that's how many bags I have of the large drills. So I pulled out nine of the large ones, but I've got all of my other drill containers in a large bucket down on my left, just sitting on the floor. I don't try to keep my containers segregated. I just throw them all in one container and just dig and plunk and, and get the ones that I want when I'm looking. And it makes a bit of a noise, which is another reason why I decided to do this as a voiceover because between the bags crinkling and my drill containers bumping up against each other. It was a bit of a noisy little video. And the fact that we finally have my camera situated in my room, my new room, but it is a little bit higher than it was in my other room. 
See, this one didn't fit in the little container, so I'm going to just pour it into a big container. But it was worth a little try. But my camera is set up a little bit higher than it was in the other room. So I was a little echoey, if that makes sense. It, just, it wasn't as clear as it had been in the old room. So I think I may try this little voiceover concoction for a bit and see if I can do a little bit better with that and make the audio better for you. And then the plus side is I can also listen to books while I'm playing and I tend to, at least while I'm scrapbooking, I tend to scrapbook better if I can listen to something. I was not putting out layouts that I was happy with whenever I was trying to concentrate on narration and talking to you guys and create at the same time. It seems my brain doesn't do that very well. I can do it while I'm working on a canvas, but not while I'm scrapbooking. Evidently, I'm not that talented. So I can't wait to start this canvas. I, the last kit that I did was a beach scene. It was an AliExpress canvas, and I only have two more AliExpress canvases. Um, I'm not going to be ordering from them any longer, strictly because of my channel. I, I want to be able to show canvases that the artist has been paid. I want to know that the artist has been paid. Some of you know that my daughter is an artist. I did not realize when I started this hobby that there was such a problem with stolen artwork. And for me, in my conscience, I don't want to promote that behavior, especially since my, this is my daughter's livelihood. So I'm going to you know, put my money where my mouth is and buy canvases that I can show you. And I want to be able to show you the entire canvas, not just a tiny little portion of it while I'm working. So I'm going to be, for me, probably using Diamond Art Club exclusively, strictly because I'm in the States and they're in the States. Their customer service is fantastic and the shipping is very, very quick. So that also means that I can keep up with my one in, one out rule, meaning that when I finish a canvas, I buy a canvas because I do have two hobbies, scrapbooking being one of them, which they're both in the larger scheme of things, diamond painting can be kind of expensive, depending on what kits you buy, and scrapbooking can be kind of expensive. So I need to kind of show both of my hobbies some love, and that's, you know, this channel, I highlight both, both of the hobbies, but I also want to be a little picky about what canvases I purchase, and I want to be able to, I want to be able to play with the larger canvases. So that means that I cannot have a stash. I don't have room to put large canvases. I don't have room to store them and I was storing them with the hanger storage system I lost my word there for a second the hanger storage system and storing them in the closet in this new room and I noticed when I pulled out the canvases they were straight they were in really good condition as far as not curling or anything but they had rivers and the only thing that I can think of is there were temperature changes in the closet and that caused the adhesive to kind of river up so that's not going to work for me. I'm not going to be able to store my canvases in that closet. And if I can't store them properly, then I'm, you know, it's kind of a waste of money at that point. If you're going to ruin a canvas just by storing it, then why do it? So I've kind of, you know, again, I'm going to do the one in one out rule. So I don't have a huge stash and I don't have to worry about ruining a canvas because I accidentally stored it in the wrong manner. Pardon me, I'm having a, a sip of coffee. I have coffee and water sitting next to me. Coffee so that hopefully I can stay warm because it is 24 degrees outside and I am evidently a big baby when it comes to cold weather. I think we're about to come up to my brain fart. I had a heck of a brain fart on this one. Yep, it looks like we are about to come up to the brain fart. What happened was, is I had three bags that were very, very similar in color, and it was 823 and 939. I thought all three bags were 823, so I stuck two of them in with, yep, here it comes, here comes the brain fart, I'm looking for it going, um, where is it? I stuck all three of the baggies into my spare little zip top bag thinking they were all 823. So when it came down to trying to find 939, I was like, um, where's it at? It's not like Diamond Art Club to just not give you a color. So this is where I'm finding it. I'm like, oh, 
Oh, okay. So what it ended up being is I had one bag of 823 and I had two bags of 939. And I accidentally put the 939s into my zip top. And I'm also going to realize that I can fit two of these baggies into the large container. So I'll go back to my 310, pull it out of the zip top, and put that in its container also. So now I have no spare drills at all to have to refill. Everything's already in containers. And when I run out, I, I know I'm out. I have nothing left in the zip top bag to refill with. And I, I kind of like that. I, I like that I'm not going to have to keep track of a, a spare zippy top bag that's got all my spare drills in it, my extra drills. And this is when I remember that, oh yes, I can get two baggies in here. I don't know why it didn't dawn on me with the 310s, why I didn't just go ahead and put all the 310s in. But there we go. And this is the, the 310s. I'm fixing all of that up. And this is not the first time I've made this mistake. I, when it's, you know, 310 and 939 and 823, those are, those are very, very similar colors. And for some reason with them, I, I don't know if I misread the numbers on the baggies or if I have a dyslexic moment or what, but it's not the first time I've just assumed that they're all the same as, you know, stuck them in spare storage and, and then thought that I was missing a color. So I'm having to learn to go back and just double check myself before I panic and contact the seller, which luckily I haven't had to contact the seller yet. I've always found them, but you know, I don't want to make a fool of myself when they've sent the, they've sent the drills to you. And so far I have not ever had a problem having a seller send me drills if I've been short, but I also don't want to take advantage of the situation either. You know, if it's my mistake, then I need to find that it's my mistake. And just, I mean, I'm getting so close to being done. So close. I have sped this up just a wee bit so that it wasn't, the real time was just about 45 minutes to put all this together. So if you're kidding up for the first time, this is a 29 color painting. And in real life, it took me about 45 minutes to kit everything up. Now that's with fussing with a cat, you know, a kitten. It's um, finding drills that, that I put in the wrong spot. It's making a little bit of a mess. It's you know, trying to get everything organized. So once you have it streamlined, it does move faster, but it did take me about 45 minutes in real time to put all this together. Now kidding up, I don't mind doing kidding down. I don't like kidding down, but man, it, it's a necessary evil. Those extra drills have saved my behind a, a time or two when I've, I don't know if I've just stuck them on the wrong symbol and I find that I run out. I don't know if I really did have an issue where the manufacturer didn't send enough drills, but my extra spare drill storage has saved my behind at a, a time or two. So it is still worth having those boxes around. But I much prefer kitting up and working on the painting than I, than I will kit down. Very rarely will you watch me do a kitting down video because I'm really just having to force myself to do it. That one had a bit of static in it, so I just gave up and dumped it in the tray. I was like, you know what? Let's just let's just fix this. But again, I find that I have more static if it's cold outside. I don't know what the difference is, but things tend to stick together. And in my new room, I'm in front of a huge window, so I, you know, it's a little bit colder in here than it has been in my other room. So I deal with a little bit more static. But speaking of window, if you notice, I don't have any studio lights on. This is just the window and my overhead like regular lights from my ceiling fan. So I'm really liking the window. I'm liking the fact that I don't have to have a lot of extra lights provided I, I film during the day. And you get good quality. To me, this is really good quality lighting. You're able to see everything. You can see the colors without them being washed out. So it's gonna make me a very happy camper.
I do eventually, before I start this painting, I will move into the smaller tray. I realize that there's a lot of extra space in this tray that, that is not really necessary for this particular painting, so I will move over into my smaller cutlery tray for this painting because it is only 29 colors. This tray I found at Home Goods and it works really well on the very large paintings because you do have five rows and a large tool tray. But I did move over into the regular size cutlery tray that you would put in a drawer in your kitchen for this one and, and it fills it out quite nicely. I just didn't think whenever I was kidding up that, that oop, these may not fit properly in this tray. But I like the fact that when I am done for the day, I will take a splat mat, a baking mat that goes, you know, it's a silicone baking mat. I'll put it over my work surface of my canvas, and then I put my tray on top of that. And it keeps the cats from, from sitting on my canvas while I'm not in my room. Sorry, I have the hiccups for a second. But it keeps the cats from sitting on everything. And, you know, the tray to them is uncomfortable, so they won't pop a squat on it. And the silicone baking mat, if I have a section that is not covered properly or if I didn't do something properly, the silicone mat keeps the adhesive still covered so it doesn't dry out. So it's kind of my, my little fail safe. The last two little drill pots. I like that color. There's another color, uh, the letter A. I was just going to point at the screen like you could see me. I'm such a dork sometimes. I was going to go, hey, look at that, that one in A. I like that color. You can't see me. Why am I trying to point to it? Anyway, the, the colors on this painting are gorgeous, but I'm, I'm kind of drawn to the turquoise. There's two or three different shades of turquoise in this painting that I have just been like, this is so pretty and it's going to look so pretty. So there's my drill tray, and as you can see, there is a, a complete row that's empty, but while organizing, it is numbers, letters, symbols, and then my tool tray. And that's just how my brain works. It, for some reason, this works out really well for me. And yes, I know in this larger tray, I could have put these smaller containers flat, but I did them on the side just out of habit. I realized afterwards I could have used this large tray and just kept my containers flat and they wouldn't have rolled around, but I didn't think about it at the time. So I hope you enjoyed this Kidding Up of You Must Believe by Mandy Manzano in Diamond Art Club. I know that you have a choice of channels and I really appreciate you taking the time of just spending a few minutes of your day with me. Until next time, bye-bye.